Good morning, ma'am. Uh, hi, I'm Deepti from Curious Times. And uh, uh, we welcome you to the Teacher's Day special on Curious Times. Uh, this year, our Teacher's Day theme for our magazine and for the conversation and narrative that we're putting across is teachers are uh, leading through crisis and reimagining future. So um, a warm welcome to you and we we are really curious to know about all the views and uh, you know all your opinions that you would have on our today's agenda. Very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deepti. Okay, ma'am. Uh, I uh, before our uh, you know interview, we were actually having a brief conversation about your journey and uh, your uh, you know how you've carved out your space in the education and how did you actually make this happen for not just for yourself but many 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 more teachers as well as a lot of students who you have inspired and are now very well placed in their lives. Uh, on that note, I want to first congratulate you and then put you through some of the difficult questions that are hanging around, uh, you know, uh, as us as a society and for the children at large. I'll try so to answer them to the best. Yeah. So, ma'am, uh, I think we'll start with the uh, very first one, which is like, you know, also... Uh, very, very sort of, you know, favorite with most people. Uh, uh, you know, there's this ed tech, right? Uh, and sometimes I wonder if it is tech in ed or is it ed tech, right? So uh, what is, how do we sort of, you know, say what is the role of technology in education? And uh, I, when we, when I ask that, I'm actually uh, also looking at like it's, there is logistics part of it, which is like, you know, Zoom, Google Meet, and there's student apps to disseminate homeworks and report books or whatever. But what is an overall role which a technology will play in education? What, what will it change? Well, I feel that, you know, for a long time, we had overlooked technology in education. And we had kind of, you know, made it just like a computer class where the children just learned the basic computer skills that they should know. When suddenly we were hit by the storm of the pandemic and then education with technology suddenly came up, you know, like one, you know, like a fountain and we all had to be like, you know, busting in it and washing ourselves in it, doing this, doing that. And I felt that even though we were like, you know, rushing around doing this and that, something emerged out of it. And the thing is that, that we realized that today, as far as Indian schools go, we were way, way behind what is happening in other countries. We were not so tech savvy as far as teachers go, as far as you know, universities go, as far as our education system goes. And students were just at the periphery. It was not like they were deep in. So I feel that if you want to exist in today's world, you have to and you must be the change and follow what is happening and do things in the right way so that technology is a part of you. Technology is a part of the child's world, but to an extent that it is still a tool and it does not overpower you. You know, sometimes we felt when the, this pandemic started that, you know, we just didn't know where to begin. But when we slowly started doing things with it, it was like a like, wow, yeah, okay, I know this. And the students were in the same boat. And at some times, we felt that the students were far ahead of us. And I feel that if they have got the brains and if they have got the intelligence to grasp so much, why are we stopping them? What is stopping us from teaching them? What is stopping us from putting them on that path so that they are on a world footing, on an international footing? So I definitely believe that we must make sure that even now if the pandemic is over, we should make sure that our children are learning not only just the basic skills, but are doing things enough so that if they have to go abroad, if they have to go anywhere, they are, you know, on the same level with the others, other students, wherever they are. And they're able to use those skills regularly. It's mute. Yeah, sorry. 
So, ma'am, in that process of uh, technology being uh, sort of, you know, relevant uh, and uh, also empowering kids, uh, children, uh, what is the role of teacher then? Like, you know, how teacher fits in and what does she do? What's her next role? The first role that she played was we all played was that we learned it ourselves. Right. We were like uh, useless, but we suddenly began to use it and we began to not only use it, we began to get happy about it. It was first in the beginning like a headache. But I realized as the head of the school that I could not tell my teachers to do it. I had to do it myself because they were not willing to try change until and unless they saw their head doing it. So the biggest part was where we all formed the team and learned together. Okay. Now I feel the teachers... It is their duty to make sure that you do not forget what you have learned. It is your duty to make sure that you are sending it down to the generations and making all the children adapt at it as much as you are. And if you are not, make sure that you also become adept at it. Don't make an excuse. Don't think that we have online classes. So that is why teachers need to continuously practice. It's like swimming or driving, Deepti. If you stop driving, you're going to get, you know, nervous again if you stop swimming you're going to fumble again so i feel that we should just keep going and make sure that you're doing enough activities for the child and we should be discerning what is it that the child needs to do with it what is it that i'm going to benefit the child and myself with it and not just do everything and anything many times i've noticed how padlet bhi karo mentimeter bhi use karo ye bhi karo wo bhi karo why do what you need to learn Learn what you need to do. And that way, I feel that we will have a very good balance, you know. But I feel that we have come to a stage where a lot of things are pushed. Artificial, artificial intelligence, ye karo, wo karo. Everything has become important suddenly in technology. Where are the teachers for that? Mind you, as I'm telling you again, my school is a not a, a financially advantaged school. I don't have a computer teacher today. And we are still struggling to get somebody. I've got so many people applying, but they're not good with their, uh, you know, with their skills. How, about, how does a teacher teach if she doesn't know how? So where are the teachers? Where are those experts? How am I going to teach my children if we ourselves don't have? So where is the training happening for them? You see, that is the big problem today. We don't have experts in this to help us. Everybody was fumbling and I was fortunate enough that I had a very good computer uh, expert who took on that task that, ma'am, I will teach, I will teach. And she taught us all, you know, from the simple to the most basic thing to the most complex. So we need good teachers to take the next step ahead. Yeah, that's uh, that's obviously that's true, and that's that's very very important. That uh, India definitely needs good teachers, uh, and I mean world over they need. But I think we have somewhere, you know, where we uh, the students have are take can take a bigger leap if we have the right teachers in terms of you know many of the subjects that we today struggle with. Uh, you know, the next point that we uh, sort of also discussing is that NEP uh, 2020 is lay laying a lot of emphasis on skilling uh, and uh, as against just the knowledge and uh, then also uh, co-curricular activities, what we conventionally uh, thought to be like, you know, side activities or whatever, uh, being becoming a mainstream, uh, you know, uh, subjects uh, for many children because they excel in that and each one is having a different talent so um, by doing so uh, will it change the learning outcomes of children most definitely most definitely this is one of the best things that happened with NEP I would say and I'm so glad see NEP came into place when just during the pandemic I think when India realized that that old policy is no longer working and that you know we needed skill-based people here in, the, in, in India and you know I think that uh, you know that committee that was formed I think did the best thing by you know rephrasing that policy in such a way that vocational teaching skill learning competency-based learning became not just mere talk but it was more action-oriented 
previously we were doing co-curricular activities in school we were doing yoga we were doing karate we were doing computers we were doing skating we still have all those okay in the schools here at least in my school but it has taken a different turn because now we have realized that just uh, uh, science doctors engineers and lawyers are just not enough there are so many many things i mean uh, pro professions and careers that students can you know envisage for themselves and how do they envisage if they do not have the basic skills and another thing that was lacking was life skills the 21st century skills as we so call them you know literacy in everything the critical thinking we were lacking in it and right. today this nep is putting everything in a proper order it will take time mind you it is not a year or two it's going to be like maybe 20 years down the road but right. skill training competency based learning and vocational learning is become a part of our change that we are doing in our schools and they started with the principals they gave us a training program there was an app the annual pedagogical plan that we had to formulate and in that we began to put all these things in down you know then the teachers were trained and now we are having sessions in our schools where we are training our teachers to think differently to unlearn and learn again that no more of those rote methods no more of you know giving questions out to students make them sit more, more no more of individual speaking more of collaborative team work because that's what is needed today right. so we have to be with the time steepti we cannot right. we cannot afford to close our eyes right 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 and so uh, you know just picking up from there do you think then schools can play a larger role in careers uh, careers counseling or uh, helping children from transitioning to school to a mainstream higher education for themselves and just identifying where their skills are where their heart is where their uh, aptitude is can schools play a bigger role in that deepthi this is my most favorite question okay <laughs> that i'm going to ask so when yeah. i was talking about my journey when i was mm. talking about my journey now that i moved to being a director i thought to myself how else and how better can i help my students or students all over schools and what came to me as like a like a surprise package was the ic3 you know this is a group of people who have started this career guidance and counseling so i'm doing this one year flagship program where i'm learning and studying to become a career guidance counselor and what i feel is that there i learned or i'm rather learning is that that we have to start at a very you know primary level in order to make children aware that i have so many things available in life for myself and for which reason career guidance career counseling and starting all kinds of programs in school where you open the eyes of the child and the parents mostly the parents because they are the ones who say mera bachcha engineer banega ya doctor banega right and they, they instill it at a very young age and right. if a child says i want to be a, become a hairdresser it is like uh, the family name has gone completely into mud you understand so hmm. i feel that yeah. this is the time when their children are young where you expose them to the vastness of careers to the vastness of skills to the vastness of abilities that are inborn in them there is no child no child on earth i feel who does not have something within him or an ability and we have to tap it with this kind of skill training vocational training where the child will know that if i'm not good in maths i can do physical education i can become maybe a um, you know uh, an adventure uh, uh, you know uh, an educator or i can be a sports you know a teacher in a university and i can do well for myself how will the child realize that if we don't start at rock bottom in schools colleges are way 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 far way too far right so, <coughs> right so what we done yeah what we done this year is that you know Uh, we uh, we had this big fair, the IC three fair in Hyderabad, where ninety three countries were represented, and there were student fairs where the students could go and see the different pathways available for them, the subjects that they could take. See, previously it was only science, like physics, chemistry, bio, or maths, physics, chemistry. Now they're like you can take literature, you can take right. music, 
Right. Where was this before? So right. it's a good thing that right. we yeah. Right, right. Uh, Ma'am, uh, just to sort of, you know, add to that uh, and picking up from our law, uh, from this part of it, you know, now, uh, you know, so uh, there is a, there is this whole uh, parallel school, or I may say supplementary schools, which are the coaching classes, and maybe the ed tech companies are also coming into that uh, space. Uh, what do you think, like, you know, uh, can schools prepare them for higher education? Should competitive exams have different curriculum than schools? Uh, should, uh, you know, so what roles, what role do, do coaching classes or do they at all have a role? What should that be? Like, obviously, I'll just say that, you know, we always talk about like, you know, uh, work for eight, nine hours in the office and don't bring your work back home. Here is like, a kid coming through from school spending eight hours in school and yet there is four more hours to go so uh so what is that and what should the the coaching classes be doing if at all they should be or should schools prepare kids for whatever is you know coming along in their life and are those eight hours not enough so the first thing would be that you know the competitiveness has been introduced by us because there were few colleges and large numbers. And then it all became about ranks and percentages, right? If there was, if that was taken out, if there was no uh, capitation fees and all these kind of things, you know, there would be so much of less stress for the child. And then the schools where we are training our children, not every school can have the best of teachers and the best of everything. You know, there might be a mediocre school trying its best. So be it. But maybe the child needs more help. So he has to be maybe going to a tuition or, a, a, you know, or, or one of these coaching classes in order to improve himself. So, you know, the, it is need based. What is your need? Is the school good enough to give you the best? So there are in my school, some children understand with the maths sir perfectly well. Okay, and they feel that he's the best. But there are some that they feel that in that 40 minute span of time, they're not able to figure it out. It's neither the sir's fault nor the child's fault. Then definitely he needs a little extra coaching. And what is wrong if he's doing it? He's just trying to improve himself. So when the competition is lying within himself, he's not competing with X and Y around him. Then that competition is the best competition that, okay, I want to be a doctor. I, my marks and grades are not good enough. Let me join a coaching class. But if so-and-so is becoming a doctor and his marks are 99 and I need to get 100 to be there, then everything changes. And here, the competition is such. Now, these colleges over here, they're, you know, uh, there are large, large numbers of students applying. And not all of them are getting seats. Then what do we do? So if skills, vocations, are given the same importance, then they have so much more to choose from. Then there will be no, there'll be no mad rush. So I feel vocational training, skill-based learning, competency-based learning will make the child, you know, have a wider angle in his thinking. And these colleges also should cater and have many more courses being offered for such children so that they don't need to have to strive for success. And the long hours, I think, are totally uh, based upon the individual. So the coaching classes have a right to be there, according to me. If they are doing a good job and helping the student, why not? And it is their income. Just like our schools are there, they are also learning, I mean, earning something and uh, professionals are using it. So my own teacher, she was a teacher in my school and uh, she was the one who taught us computers. She was getting a very meager salary. She had, she's a young mother with two kids to bring up and she's a single mother. She was offered a tutorial job whereby she teaches, teaches these bright children and the salary has tri tripled. So instead of 30, she's getting 90. Why would she not use her skills over there? Why not, you know, the right opportunity for such an, uh, you know, uh, talented child or a girl who's teaching now? So I feel equal opportunity for all and lots of skills and uh, educational colleges opening up with training for vocations too. Okay, sorry, I'll, I'll just take uh, like one minute break. Sure, no problem. 
No, so I'm back. So I think, okay, you answered our question around that. Uh, we, uh, I, I think one of the last questions, which you would also sort of, you know, uh, would be, uh, I heard you earlier and it would be important for you also to answer. Uh, and we talked about it though, but I think for our audience, we would say that, you know, uh, the, the pressures of 21st century are very different than what they were in earlier, uh, you know, times. And so in that case, you know, what will be the role of schools and teachers in the mental well-being of students going forward? The role of uh, the role of teachers in the I miss in the that mental uh, yeah in the mental well-being of you know the students. Oh my God, such an important role, Deepti. They play a very very big role in this, and I'll tell you why. Because number one, I think teachers need to know what is happening in the child's mind and what is happening at his home. A teacher should be like a counselor, come psychologist, come a role model, come professional and excellence in a subject, you know, professional knowledge should be there because the child is spending so much time with the teacher just from home when he comes here and she's able to understand the child's mind. All of us, in fact, in schools, we must have a counselor now today. It is the need of the hour. The children have got tremendous stress because it's not just peer pressure. It is not just that they have to do well. It is coming from their homes. It is the amount of studies do you know, Deepti, that like what we were doing, say, in first year and inter is not being done at eight and nine class level. We are we are like coming downwards with the kind of knowledge that we are giving them and it is in volumes. And how does this child take it? He definitely has the ability. The brain is very smart. It can take in a lot. But these children need to develop not just academic skills, but they need to develop human being skills. And those skills are the ones which are missing today. This world has got knowledge, but we need to give them wisdom. Right. And Bertrand Russell has done a beautiful lesson in that. I teach it, I taught it to my 10 class in the state board that knowledge and wisdom have to go side by side. There are so many people coming out with specific, you know, training, but they're not able to use it wisely. You right. know? And how will it be? And the other thing is, how do you cope with this day-to-day -day stress? How are you going to be in an office or in an environment? Are you being taught in schools to look after yourself? So that's the, the, the mental level, the physical level, and the spiritual level. Right. It, India talks about, yeah, India talks about it being a religious country with so many religions, but I'm I'm appalled by the lack of humaneness within us. Right. Where, you know, where a student, like I, I brought this to my attention of my students, that two children had failed. And I asked the students of that class, I said, how many of you called up and asked those boys, how are you doing? Do right. you need any help? Right. And that is lacking. That type of, you know, that type of empathy. We need to have right. an empathetic and a sympathetic society. Right. And we should teach our children all these values along with academic work that we are doing. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, ma'am, I, uh, we've kind of covered all that uh, sort of, you know, stuff that we wanted to check with you. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, maybe you can talk a little bit about your school now and it would be good for our audience to also know about uh, the great work that y'all are doing at your school. So our school name is Neo School Isa High School. It was actually Neo School Isa, but CBSE and the State Department added the high school. So now you got a name which says Neo School Isa High School. We are very happy about it. We don't, I don't think it matters. What matters is what is happening under the name of that school. So my school children are mostly first generation learners with some coming from the middle income. And lately, because we are the only uh, CBSE school in that area, we do get children who are coming from the Middle East and other places because you know that is a CBSE school. We cater to those kind of parents who have you know, come with like crumpled notes in their hands, you know, who have saved their monthly saving and brought and you know, who are coming there and paying their fees. And then when we are picking up the fees and seeing those, you know, papers or whatever the notes are, it is when you re realize what a big challenging task is there ahead of us. 
we are not a new school we are not a corporate school we are not one of those commercially viable schools but we are a school where we are trying to make a difference because we also point that this is a school with a difference so we want to make sure that we are making a difference in the lives of those children in such a way that they are able to look after those parents of theirs who have come with hardly any money in their hands and many a times we have pardon fees we have let and especially in the pandemic the school underwent such a major financial loss because most of the parents had absolutely zero money and they would come at at my door saying ki madam paise nahi hai magar bachche ko taaleem dena hai and now acha theek hai le lo so we we let pardon fees for nearly like maybe 25% of the school we took minimum we, we let go of march april may fees because the child wanted to come to school and children were like we will not go anywhere else so we've gone through very difficult times we have learned that every child is a unique individual a unique being with the most amazing talent hidden within him and all it needs is a bit of a love a bit of you know proper education and your unleashing unleashing power power of of a kind where they can even touch the stars and the sky they have it all children have it in them whether it's a poor child or it's a rich child there should be no difference in that in the way you look at the child it should be the child should be looked with love and the child should be taught to use his head his heart and his hands in the most beautiful way whereby we are forming a chain of collaboration of harmony and love rather than thinking i am better than you and if society were to learn this beautiful lesson that we are all one i think there will be so much of harmony not only in hyderabad itself but all over and within us and there will be peace at the end of the day so this school and looking after this school has been one such experience for me where i have been fashioned by it i can i mean i think eat sleep aiza school for the last 33 years and every day is a challenge because something new happens over there and every day we are we are evolving to become better human beings and to be role models for these parents and this society over there and my message to everyone would be as i was telling you deepthi is that that put your 100% in whatever you do and all paths will open up and your journey will become a very beautiful one be it education or whatever that you are doing that's how mm. i feel so long yeah for a long time i felt that oh i'm looking up to this poor school my colleagues have gone way ahead and then when i saw what it did to me i began to be thank- thankful and in gratitude that no what i'm doing is good enough and i should not be thinking this way and that has actually transformed me to because i'm at peace you know right. and what i'm doing right uh <clears throat> thank you so much ma'am for your time and uh, and for your wonderful journey and uh, you you've been a inspiration uh, all your life and especially with uh, with our audience i think everybody all the new teachers and everybody in the system will actually get inspired by uh, how you've kind of made this school so special and uh, including you know your own uh, journey and career as a uh, as an educate educator and a uh, you know senior leader now uh, thank you so much and i want to wish you and your faculty a very happy teachers day and wishing you, you so all much. the very Bye. best wishing you all the very best and your students the very, very best for uh, their futures deepthi i just want to ask you one question that how did you think of right titling this as reimagining why did you think of that uh, well you, uh, uh, so ma'am uh, yeah so uh, reimagining is uh, particularly in the context of whatever the new things we talked about you know uh, the nep the uh, changing the changes that technology is bringing around uh, the emphasis on mental health uh, the reason to have inclusive campuses because the world is looking at inclusion so with all of that we we wanted to uh, take people's views in uh, especially the senior leadership's view on how they are reimagining the future so did you know that unicef has coined a phrase for this they also have written the word reimagine for young children and young people did you know that to yeah. engage them in defining the vision they want for themselves and for the future generations did you know that yeah. unicef had coined yes. that yes 
but I was actually taken up by that word reimagining, and I just wanted you to know that you have coined a very beautiful phrase that right. reimagining the future, and it yeah. is in line and aligning with the UNICEF views. Yeah. No. Yes. Yes. So yes pretty much. Pretty you. much. Yeah. Pretty much from there. But yeah, we've uh, kind of deliberating on this uh, word for last one one and a half years now, because that's what. Uh, you know, by compulsion, pandemic forced some of this to happen. Some of this is happening by design, uh, and some if some of it is happening uh, by you know the COVID brought in, the NEP brought in, and suddenly the world is also waking up to some of these very important topics. So uh, that's where we brought this uh, sort of you know discussion. Thank you so much. Like to, I would like to conclude deeply by congratulating you on this. Uh, endeavor of yours and this initiative that you have got i don't know whether it is a printed matter that you also do or it's just you know online and yes. if you can give me some more information about your uh, you know your magazine i'll be very grateful maybe we can start introducing it in our school yes, for the young children to read so please uh, keep in touch and let me know what exactly yes, is the way that you can do it yes ma'am definitely and I, wish your team, uh, for, I wish your team all success and i Thank hope that you, you all much. are able to do a lot more. Yes, thank you so much, ma'am. We will. Best. Yeah, thank you so much. We will stay in touch. Thank you so much, and happy to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.